Well, here's another interesting question that's been sent into our Wonderful Day in the Lord podcast, and, and it goes this way. Did Jesus ever experience insecurities and doubts, wondering if he was going, doing the right thing or worrying about losing friends or loved ones? That's a very interesting question. Uh, I think the short answer to that is no. Jesus, I don't think, was ever concerned about such things. And, and I remember as a, a teenager, first uh, noticing as I was reading through the Gospels, the composure of Jesus Christ, that nothing rattled him, nothing concerned him. He, he wasn't trying to win friends and influence people in that way. Uh, the, 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 the best of the debaters of his age could not shake his views. He, he simply was always in control of all circumstances, and he always won every debate. And I remember that when I first started realizing that, when I first started studying the Bible for myself, and spending more and more time in the scriptures, and really maybe for the first time in my semi-adult life, probably my, in my teenage years, how Jesus just handled every circumstance with such perfection. How, how amazing that was to me, and how pleasing that was for me to learn that. Uh, one of the uh, probably the first times I began to really grasp that as a semi-adult, almost an adult, was probably in my either sophomore or junior year of high school. And uh, that I was going to public school, and for whatever reason, uh, that year or that semester, it's been a long time now, uh, I uh, had two study halls each day, and uh, I didn't need two study halls each day. I only really needed one to get my homework done and so forth. So uh, I had an extra study hall, 45 minutes to an hour, I don't remember, where I really didn't have all that much to do. And so I started to bring in two school to the study hall, a little New Testament. Uh, and I've got that New Testament, or one very, very similar to it. I've had two or three, and here it is today, this little little beat up little Bible, which I could hardly read probably today. But uh, I took this to school, kept it in my shirt pocket. I was kind of a nerd, you know. And I, I brought it out during study hall, and I began reading in depth the Bible, taking my time for 45 minutes or more every day to read through the scriptures. And I'd also take a little notebook. This is one that goes back to almost that same period uh, where are my little notes uh, on there, they're, they're not very readable and they're not something that anybody would say or those are just have great insight, great insights or anything. But they were my notes and I would take notes in just a little spiral notebook like this. And I remember in, in school, just reading through the gospels at Jesus's handling of everything that came his way. And just being delighted to see Jesus' com composure and his power to, to, to answer every question with such wisdom that, that the people challenging him had no recourse. They had no way to defend themselves against Jesus. Jesus never worried about such things. And that's because, of course, he's God and the God-man, but he also had great authority. He, can't, he didn't... He didn't live on the basis of the authority of, of others. Even, even Scripture uh, was, uh, and, and he believed in Scripture, he uh, trusted Scripture, he quoted Scripture, but Jesus is the authority over even Scripture since he is the Word, and he gives us Scripture. So he said, for example, Matthew 5 is an interesting place. Matthew 5 and uh, in verse uh, 21, and the Pharisees and different ones were challenging him, he said, you've heard that the ancients were told you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall, shall be guilty before the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty, and so forth. So, yes, the scriptures were accurate, but Jesus says, but I say. Jesus uses his own authority here. He had no reason to be concerned about what people thought because he was the ultimate and final authority. Now, verse 27, very similar thing. It says, you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. Now that's in the Ten Commandments, right? But I say to you that everyone who looks upon a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus added up. He raised up the, the bar uh, concerning lust and adultery. And Jesus said, I say this on, on the basis of the authority of Christ himself. In verse 31, Now it has been said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that everyone who divorces his life except for the reason of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery. 
And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, Jesus raises the bar. He is the ultimate and final authority. This is the way Jesus speaks. This is what we find consistently throughout the, the Gospels as we get this narrative of Jesus' life and statements. What a wonderful thing to, to know that Jesus was never worried, never anxious over how people would respond. He always had the, the answer that came with the authority of Almighty God. And we can bank on that and we can trust in that. What, our Savior is the ultimate authority. That's why we look to Him.